All right, today we're going to talk about um, what are called integrated rate laws. All right, to this point, we remember we're still talking about kinetics, which is how fast do reactions run? Okay, how fast do they go? And we've talked about the fact at this point that the concentration, changing the concentration of some of the products and the reactants rather can change that. Now we're going to still look at rate laws. All right, only we're going to go to an integrated form. And remember, um, just as a review, our general rate law form, you've got the rate is equal to this lowercase k, and then let's say you have a reaction where you have A is one of your reactants raised to whatever order. Okay, so this is the generic form that we have for integrated rate laws. Now we're going to integrate them. All right, now again, a quick review. Rate law expressions allow us to calculate the rate of a reaction from the rate constant in the reactant concentrations, <clears throat> excuse me. We also can use experimental data to first determine the rate law and then to go back and be able to figure out and solve for K if we have data regarding concentrations and rates. So um, now here is where it gets interesting. Those rate laws, okay, the same old rates that we were just looking at. Rate is equal to K and then however many reactants to their order can be integrated using calculus. Now, for those of you that have not taken calculus, do not panic. You're still going to be able to do the math because it's just a matter of knowing what buttons to hit on your calculator. You're just not going to understand why the math works. And for those of you who have taken calculus before, it's going to just help make those solid connections as to why the numbers and why the equations can be manipulated that way and we may need to fall on you to explain some of that but like I said the rest of you that have not taken calculus do not panic you're still gonna be able to do the math you're just not gonna essentially understand the proof of how we get to the math now why do we care about that well we can use these integrated rate laws to determine the concentrations of reactants at any time during the course of the reaction so what we can do is these rea these equations are now going to give us the opportunity to say okay if 230 seconds has passed how much a do I have left okay and that's where it's, why it's useful now what we're going to investigate is the integrated rate laws for zero first and second order reactions and for each order you have to be able to identify and this goes back to just straight up memorization there's going to be a chart at the end of this PowerPoint that you just really flat out need to memorize um, we haven't done that in a while but it's worth it number one the integrated rate law um, which is just another form of the rate law some of these are on the AP Chem sheet but you don't get the AP Chem sheet on your uh, multiple choice section, so it's worth it to memorize these. Um, number two of what a linear plot of the concentration of the reactant versus time, because what's going to be different here is now on some of these we're going to have to use graphical data to determine what order it is. So we're going to have to be investigating um, graphs again. You also know have to know the rate constant as a function of a slope. That sounds ugly. That's just recognizing what it would be in the form of y equals mx plus b and then what's called the half-life equation and we'll come back to doing some half-life problems similar to what we did in nuclear chem where we can figure out the concentration of different substances depending on how much time now this is just our little asterisk the fractional and third order rate laws do exist where you have you know your concentration maybe to the third order or your con your order would maybe one half or one third they're beyond the scope of this course so if you see some resources that use that they're not wrong it's just beyond what we're going to cover okay integrated rate, rate laws tell us how concentration varies with time and we will only look, focus on reactions with one reactant for now just because if we can get good at those then we're going to be in good shape and we'll do some practice problems with more than one reactant so this is just our generic form coefficient um, and then version of that Okay, for a first order reaction, okay, we use use mathematical methods. Now here's talk about accept the proof. But here's our first order rate law. And it can be integrated into okay, here you have ln, which is your natural log key. Just again, if you know how to find the ln button on your calculator, you're gonna be fine. But just to give you a explanation, this is the natural log of the concentration of A at time zero. So at the first time, this would be your constant, your second concentration 
at whatever time you're talking about going past. So if you knew the concentration of A at the beginning, and you knew K, and you knew how much time has passed, you could solve for what that new concentration would be. Or if you knew the second concentration, you could solve for T. So it, it's plug and chug. The math's a little bit uglier because we get to logs. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is just another form of it. Uh, the only difference between this one <laughs> and this one is that it's just in a different form. And you're going to see me use different forms depending on what I have to solve for. Um, you know, obviously, if I'm solving for the natural log of A, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the concentration of A here, it's going to be easier to use this version. If I'm solving for T, it's going to be easier to use this version. So either one. You, we've got, we're good at algebra, so that, therefore we should be in good shape. All right, so we can calcul cal calculate that concentration any time. We also, it can be determined by a graph where he, if here is my y equals mx plus b, and when I say determined by a graph, it means if I have, and we're going to do these in class, so don't, you know how it goes. I explained it the first time and we're a little confused. And then when we do some practice problems, hopefully it'll fill in the blanks of how and why. Here is your concentration of your reactant, and here's your time. But in s for first order, what gives us a straight line with a negative slope is when we take the natural log of that number. Okay, and again, I'll show you where these come from in class, but if it's first order, you've got natural log of the concentration over time. Okay, so then you have LNA versus T is a straight line. Okay, now half-life. We've seen this concept before. Okay, half-life is the time it takes for a reactant concentration to reach half of its original concentration. Okay, now that makes sense. I mean, the, the name is at least somewhat self-explanatory on this. And it does not depend on concentration. Okay, it does not depend on concentration for first order reactants. Okay, if you remember when we did nuclear chem, I kind of set you up for success <laughs> and picked first order react reactions. You just didn't know it. Um, you know, where the half-life is this, one-fourth is gone, how much remains. And if you do look on page 569, there's another form of the integrated rate law there just to be able to take a different look. But for first order, here's that summary chart I was kind of telling you about, whether this is our basic rate law, this is the integrated rate law, here's the slope that gives us, the graph that gives us a straight line, what the slope is equal to, and then the half-life equation. So for the half-life equation, they've essentially done the math for you and made it easy, but if you know K, you can figure out the half-life um, for a reaction. Okay, second order. This time, here is the, again, you took second order, meaning that you took the rate is equal to K, second order. We did a bunch of calculus to get to, wow, that's a bad two right there. Okay, that goes up there. Um, we did a whole bunch of calculus to get it in this form. Don't understand how, but it's just the way it is. So this time, 1 over the concentration of A is a straight line with a slope of K. All right, so, and this just shows you, because what's, what's going to happen is if we, we graph these in class, we're going to start by graphing, taking that concentration data, converting all of it into the LN of that concentration data, and graphing it. And when it comes out not as a straight line, and this is a curve, okay, then we're going to be able to go, okay, it's not first order. So let's try the graph for second order and see if that matches. So then what we do is we take that concentration data and we take the inverse of it. We flip it upside down and then we put that on the x-axis, or sorry, excuse me, on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, and if we get a straight line with a positive slope, then it's going to be second order. Okay. And this is part of the reason we only have so many possibilities, because to do that many graphs is just time consuming. Okay, this time half-life does depend on concentration. So if something is second order, the half-life will depend on the concentration, and that's what you get down here. Okay, here's your generic rate law, here's your integrated rate law, the graph that's going to give you a straight line, the slope is positive k this time, and that's just in the y equals mx plus b format, which is essentially my integrated rate law because, look, y equals mx plus b. 
there's my slope right there. Slope is equal to k, and then here's my half-life concentration, where it's 1 over k times the concentration at 0. So first order did not depend on concentration, second order does. Okay, finally we've got zero order. Um, zero order is where you have that concentration with the zero up there. And again, this would be something that either be given to you, you're going to determine graphically, or you're going to determine with the initial rate method like we did last section. So again, you take this, we do a lot of calculus, and we get to this. Okay, so this time what we're looking for is concentration of A versus T is a straight line with a, with the slope of negative K. So again, on our y-axis, we've got A, we've got T down here, positive, I'm sorry, negative K, straight line, then we know it's zero order. And we would get here by first, again, graphing um, the natural log, and if that wasn't a straight line, then we would go to 1 over the concentration, because this would determine if it was first order, this would determine if it was second order, this determines if it's zero order, um, with the, those three on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So again, half-life also does depend on concentration. How do I know that? Because if I look at the half-life equation that's down here, you'll see this is all on this chart I was talking about. We again have the concentration at time zero over 2k, in order to figure out the half-life. Um, so for example, let's see, a certain first order reaction has a half-life of 20.0 minutes, find K. All I have to do, all I have to do, as soon as I figure out its first order, I hopefully have this memorized or understand that this is my half-life equation. And so the, the K for this one is 3.47 times 10 to the negative second. And remember, since it's first order, our unit is going to be 1 over the time, um, and that's it, okay? Which again, that's part of where some of the units come from for second order and zero order, just to show that that make, um, stays consistent. How much time is required for this reaction to be 75% complete? And on these, if you remember when we did um, nuclear reactions, oh, in Chem 1 and earlier, there's lots of ways to do these correctly, but if we go to the integrated rate law, here you have, we just, this is one version, here I've rearranged it because I'm solving it for T. Okay, still solving it for T. So what you have is just, here's the different versions of the equations to manipulate everything. Um, here, remember, we're trying to isolate for T. So we got everything on the other side, and the LN is a little bit different in terms of manipulating equations, so we'll have to work on this in class. Um, but we end up flipping it upside down down here to get rid of that negative sign. Okay, And like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that in class because this is one of the only times we're going to see this um, LN function during math. But if 75% of A is consumed, all right, what we can do is say that at if we if we have 75% of A is consumed, we're going to say at time 0, or initially, we had, we're going to treat it as 1, okay, 100%. So if 75% is gone, our new amount is going to be 1 quarter of that, so 0.25. So we plug in 1 for the initial time, we plug in 0.25. Um, make sure you know how to use these buttons on your calculator. It's just different, okay? So make sure you actually take the time to plug this in on your calculator and make sure you can get the right answer, because you should end up with t is equal to 40 minutes on this in order to get the right answer. So make sure you can get that. We'll work on it in class, and for those of us who are good at calculus, well, I should say those of you who are good at calculus, we may need some assistance in getting people to understand how to manipulate that. So. Okay, here's that summary chart I was telling you, page 578 and to 579. I kept breaking up sections of this to show it to you. Uh, literally, I'm going to blow this up, <laughs> um, not <laughs> figuratively, just on paper, and give you a copy so that you can memorize it. But here are the three versions. You have all of your information for zero order, all your information for first order, and all of your information for second order. So I hope that helps, and um, we'll go from there.